जय गुरुदेव टूडेज क्वेश्चन इज वॉट इज शक्ति पीठ एंड वाई डू वी नीड अ शक्ति पीठ वाई डू वी हैव टू कंस्ट्रक्ट a temple over there meditate over there chant over there go over there why do we need to do this in various places so first we will start with understanding a story there was a king called daksha prajapati and his last daughter was called sati daksha prajapati was the lord the owner of the complete earth he was a very powerful king and uh, he loved his daughter immensely very immensely and his enemy was lord shiva because lord shiva had chopped off one of the neck of his father brahma ji So Daksh Prajapati was not in good terms with Lord Shiva but his daughter started loving Lord Shiva and she wanted to get married to Shiva so in olden days daughters were allowed to get married to the man of their choice and she got married to Shiva after that Daksh Prajapati proposed that they both can live in their his palace and take care of his kingdom but his daughter rejected that and she chose to live on the himalaya mountains on kailasha along with lord shiva and she left so her father became even more angry by this decision of us so one day she was on kailasha and she was seeing all the plains of various you know kings and deities going towards her father's palace so she was wondering why is everyone going to my father's palace and the messenger of god narad muni came over there and he said that everyone is going to your father's place why are you not going he is doing a big yagya fire worship so she said i don't know about it no one informed me so he said maybe the messenger who was in charge or the messengers who are in charge of sending invitation to various people maybe they forgot to give you the invitation mistake can happen it is a big function so you come fast so she said you go i am informing my husband getting him ready and we are coming just behind you so she went to lord shiva and said that we have to go my father is having a fire worship and shiva was angry he said we can't go without invitation she said the messenger must have forgotten and this and that she said no even you know even i know that we are not invited so it's not good to go but she was very adamant so lord shiva said that see i will not go because i know you very well you will not be able to take my insults so you go but you can only go with a calm mind not with this kind of restless mind you become enlightened you take a enlightened mind and then go there and only then you can you know go over there and take whatever they say with a positive mind but that was a mistake ma god enlightened but she didn't knew lord shiva did not knew and she lost her mind because of something very drastic which happened over there so she said do it fast give me enlightenment fast so enlightenment meditation and all cannot happen in a hurry power siddhis also you can't get in a hurry calculations also you can't do it in a hurry so you require time so lord shiva said see don't be restless just sit and do panchagni dhyan with me what is panchagni dhyan you have to call upon the five fires main fires of your body and you have to experience them with a calm mind 
One is Bhuta Agni, the fire which maintains your body temperature. Jatara Agni is the second which helps you in digestion of the food. Third is Krodha Agni or Bhuvad Agni, the fire which arises in your mind and in your body when you are angry or when you are scared or when you have been insulted. The fourth is Kamagni, the sensual fire, the sexual fire, which helps you to, you know, maintain your lineage to give birth to babies. And fifth is the Gyanagni or Premagni, the fire of wisdom, the fire of love. So, all five were created for her aroused for her and she was sitting and she was getting restless and she said no 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 I don't have time for this I'll come and get enlightened so Lord Shiva became angry and he just walked off he turned around and he was angry he did not give permission so in front of her Sati came in the form of a very furious form of Mahavidya he got scared the Lord of Lord Mahadev, Rudra Pahara, he got scared looking at his wife's form and he turned around and he started running in the opposite direction where Sati was. There also she was in a furious form. He tried to escape in eight directions. In all the eight directions she was there in furious form. He said, now there is only one way I will fly up in the sky. He was trying to fly up. And from there on the top also there was a furious form of Sati and then he tried to go underground and there also he found a furious form of Sati. Those are ten forms were known as Dasho Mahavitya. And a voice came that I know Shiva what is going to happen and even you know what is going to happen but it is destiny and don't try to change the destiny. And remember that even though if I am your wife in the form of your wife, I am the creator of everything and everyone. I am the mother of everything and everyone, including you, Lord Brahma and Vishnu. And I will give, you know, I have given birth to everything and everyone. So I know the fact, but let me go. So Shiva understood that Mother Sati is already enlightened and he let her go. She went over there. Her father was performing the fire worship yagya and she said, Father, I have come. And father did not reply to her. But when she repeatedly approached her father, her father insulted her. She bared it. But then after that, her father started insulting Lord Shiva. And uh, mother could not bear it. And she was so restless that he told me not to come and still I came. So she jumped into the fire of Yagya. And when she jumped into the fire of Yagya, her body started burning. The fire of the Yagya wasn't able to burn her body. But that Panchagni Dhyan that she had done had ignited the spy fires of her body and she took the help of that fire and she burnt off her body. When Lord Shiva came to know about this, he became very furious and he started doing the Tandav dance because he was very, very, very angry. And while dancing, he pulled out his hair and he banged it on the stone. And then again, he pulled out his hair and he banged it on the stone. And from that hair appeared Makali and Veerbhadra, Bhadrakali and Veerbhadra. And they were sent to destroy the Yagya of Daksha Prajapati, his father-in-law. So before this people 
would arrive to Daksha Prajapati. One of the staunch devotee of Lord Shiva was there, Dadich Rishi. He started fighting with Daksha Prajapati's, you know, army. So the army of deities, Indra, Indra's army, the army of Lord Vishnu and the army of Lord Brahma came to help the army of Daksha Prajapati because they were installed as guests over there. You have to invite the Trinity, but still Shiva was not called. But Brahma and Vishnu were called, so they had to protect the Yajna of Daksha Prajapati. So they fought, but they all lost. So Daksha Prajapati asked Lord Vishnu that I am your devotee. I've never saw, seen you losing to anyone. How did you lose to the army of a simple sage? He said he is a staunch believer of Lord Shiva, so he has the power of Lord Shiva. I cannot defeat him. Lord Shiva had sent Kali and Virbhatra. They again came and they destroyed the Yajna. And Virbhatra ran to kill Daksha Prajapati. Daksha Prajapati ran towards Lord Vishnu for help. He said, remove your Sudarshan Chakra. No one can face it. Cut off the head of Kali and Virbhatra. I am your staunch devotee. Save my life. Lord Vishnu said that when you call yourself my staunch devotee, you must know that the Sudarshan Chakra is the symbol of my Kundalini Shakti and my Chakras and Kali and Virbhatra are Ida and Pingala Nadi of Lord Shiva. If they both clash together, countless universes which I will be destroyed in a second. So I can't do that and he vanished from there. Virbhatra cut off the head of Daksha Prajapati and then Lord Shiva himself came. So on the request of Lord Vishnu and Lord Brahma, he fixed the head of the goat which was there for sacrifice on Daksha Prajapati. And he brought back to life Daksha Prajapati and said, you continue with your yajna. And then he went and he saw the dead body of his wife, burnt dead body. He lifted the body and he started crying in pain, in sorrow. And he started moving around in the three worlds, forgetting that he is a part of Trinity, he is God and he has responsibilities. And the balance of the universe started shaking. So on the request of the deities and the request from Lord Brahma, Lord Vishnu cut off this body into 108 pieces with his Sudarshan Chakra and many small pieces. Those small pieces, wherever they have been followed, are known as Bhaira Bhairavi. So these pieces were spread out at different places, like the heart is in Abu Umbaji, the right eye is in Kolhapur, and the genital is in Kamakya. The upper portion from genital, the waist portion is in Girnar mountain. The right elbow is in Ujjain in form of Bhuvneshwari. The crown is in Bhuvneshwari. Bhuvneshwari Devi where she is again. So all these parts out of which 51 were worshipped and established by Lord Shiva himself. And uh, we have received her left ear near Bombay in Kasara Vasala Kudrut village where the Samruti Highway is coming. So this is the story 
But why did Mother Divine allow her body to be chopped off in various pieces? And why did she, you know, allow this and let her body spread off at various places? That I will tell you. Your father loves you the most in this world. Your mother loves you even more. And God loves you a thousand times more. But if you worship God in the form of mother, there will be no bounds to this love. So, do you want to experience the divine feet of mother? If the answer is yes, join us for the course of Mahashri Vidya. To contact us, please call on the given numbers. Hari Om Tatsat. We need to understand enlightenment to understand this. Your body has countless millions of living cells, out of which only one cell says that I am Hitesh Guruji. That cell makes you bound, makes you dual with others. When enlightenment comes, that cell breaks and the energy inside becomes one with the energy outside. You become nothing because you are that one cell and that cell broke and you become everything because the energy inside became one with the energy outside. So this self-realization says that I am nothing and I am everything both together. You understand that you are God and so is everything else. Now this enlightened saints, enlightenment is a process of bursting, breaking of an atom. And you know how much energy an atomic bomb has when it will blast. So the same or more than that amount of energy is released when someone is enlightened. And when that person leaves the body, they generally don't burn the body of this kind of people because there is a air which helps you to heal yourself or go to sleep, which does not leave the body, this energy, this prana, this air does not leave the body even after your death. It is known as Dhananje Vayu because this Vayu helps the body to burn or to decay. So, in enlightened people, this air is minimum. And because it is minimum, or absolutely not there at the time of their death, their body does not burn or rot easily. So, they are either put it to the river, if they are not enlightened, so that the fishes and other lives inside water will eat them. Or else, if they are enlightened, they are buried and there is a samadhi created around them. This concept was also taken by the Muslims and they started creating the Darga. And when anyone would be around that Samadhi, they would worship, pray, meditate. Immediately they would experience Samadhi and there are chances that they would be enlightened also very easily. Like in, near the banks of Ganges, many people have received enlightenment and many dead bodies of enlightened people have been given in the river of Ganges. So, when so many atoms have been blasted over there, so when you be over there on the Kailasha or around the river Ganga and if you are meditating, you might get self-realization and at least you will get Samadhi very easy. So people go to this pilgrimage, so pilgrimage is unnecessary. But when a person who is enlightened he will leave his body and his samadhi is created or her samadhi is created. There is only one place which will be benefited. That person has gone beyond measure, beyond maya. Measure is maya. He has become infinite. He has become everything and nothing. But his body has limitations. The body is only one. 
it's dual so when you bury that body and make the samadhi only people around that place will be benefited but mother is mother mother is the ocean of compassion so she chose that her body will be cut in various parts and it will be there in various places and people can worship her wherever she is that part is so when you go to a shakti peet meditate there chant over there just show your devotion over there you will immediately experience samadhi and there are chances that you might also get liberation and if you go as a child as a devotee of mother and if you pray over there for sure you will get the darshan of mother that's my word hari om tat sat